here and now, here we are, and here we go. Where are we going? Are we going uh, to war or not to war? What are the indications? And uh, we are one in step, war. yes, <laughs> an international war. It is. Well, there's a it's new war. Over. There's another front now declared, uh, the Zionist state has declared war on Yemen. Official declaration, yes. But Britain, great, not so great Britain, in uh, the name of the General Secretary Lamy, has now agreed with the protest movements. He's come to be a supporter in the name of the uh, Foreign Office, the former not so great British Empire, has now reversed itself on the Balfour Declaration. Not in words. No, no, they haven't. They ha no, no, don't go that. Don't go that. Way. They, <laughs> they haven't will have reversed to. that. No, they will have they to. Can. They, they will have to, but, but don't don't make a statement. They have reversed. They have not reversed. No, they have they for the Yeah, not in words. Yeah. No, but uh, in effect, this is symbolically, you know, what it means because the protest movements, especially in London, you know, like half a million people or so, you know, gathering surrounding the yeah. parliament you know like yeah. they don't present it as such but that's what it is you know they could just take over the whole sort of structure occupy mm -hmm. it if they wanted to and uh, perhaps they will have to as well but this is uh, an indication that uh, we are strong and that we are making progress and uh, even if uh, trump comes in what can they get away with more than what they're getting away with now on palestine you know <laughs> The 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 uh, British Foreign Office statement uh, thing uh, two days ago, uh, which is talking about for um, you know uh, it's uh, the illegality of the occupation of the West Bank Gaza Strip, and um, asking for ceasefire. It has to do with uh, first with the resistance and resilience of the Palestinians in Gaza Strip and the West Bank. Without that, that nothing will change. Number two, that the world, uh, on uh, the grassroots all around the world is pushing for that. And the third is the uh, the vicious viciousness and the monstrosity of the Zionist crimes for the past nine months in, in Gaza had made them to realize that they cannot uh, support such uh, at least in public support such a uh, genocide so they have to come out and denounce that meantime the uh, British uh, uh, forces are 24 hours working with the uh, American and the Zionists in surveilling the Gaza Strip to for to give the Zionists the uh, you know the necessarily information to strike and hit Gaza and even into Lebanon. So mm. from one side they they talk about ceasefire legalities, but in the ground on the ground they are haven't changed since October seven. They're still supporting the Zionist genocide. So we have to be careful when we address this uh, issue, the British uh, stance, which is very hypocritical. It's hypocritical. a hypocritical. Hypocritical, yes. yes. Yeah. 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 The next step has to be, we have to demand the protest movement, has to demand that the uh, they stop ex issuing export licenses for war production from British industry to the Zionist state. That's the next thing, you know, and then shut down. Yeah. And if they don't do that, then shut down the factories, you know, by by uh, <laughs> by the protest movement can shut down any factory it wants to you know like it's enough people to do anything it wants to do you know yeah it's that, a matter that's of will. Not true. they're doing some of it they're doing some of it but uh, yeah. still they need lots of work to ahead of them yeah. but uh, that's up to them to decide which is uh, the best uh, way they uh, tackle the, the British uh, you know uh, partaking in this genocide complicity yes mm -hmm. yes yes yeah. absolutely yeah. absolutely yeah. well what's uh, gonna happen I, in the united I'll... states now we're in trouble are we are or, or well um the united states i i just wanted to say 
<clears throat> that I really um, admire the ability of the of the movement in the UK to uh, bring out large numbers of people, mm-hmm. and it's not based on encampments at a at, at, at a college. So I think it's, it's something we can learn from for how they are able to do this. Because mm-hmm. uh, it seems to be from just looking for a broad-based movement and whatever impact it can have on the policies of the UK government, Mm -hmm. that's wonderful. Um, As far as the situation between Yemen and Israel, I find it very interesting that this is a war that Israel can't just roll a tank up and invade their country. No, they can't see they can't roll a tank up and invade the country. Yeah. Actually, they're not prepared for a war like this. No, they're not. It can, that war has to be carried out by by um, by uh, uh, by uh, the United States and Saudi Arabia. So we're going to see where we're going to see where the Saudis really stand now. Mm-hmm. They stand by Israel. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, now, yeah. Now, 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 now they have to show their hand because the war a war of Israel against uh, against. Yemen yeah, cannot go forward without the U.S. and Saudi assistance, and and of the U.K. So we'll, we'll see. Mm-hmm. We'll, 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 I'm, I'm I'm curious how this is all 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 going to play out because they were clearly Israel was clearly they, they had another they had another October seven a couple of days ago. Mm-hmm. Their so called security just wasn't it wasn't. It wasn't mm-hmm. up to what they, they claim it is always up to. And they didn't know how to even to respond. Paper, yeah, they, paper they, title. There was, that was nearly a direct hit on the uh, uh, United States consulate in Tel Aviv. That was incredible. Yeah. Uh, Using, as for, uh, for Saudi Arabia, Saudi Arabia is complicit with this attack uh, because from geographical, military geography, uh, point of view, the Israeli airplanes had no choice but to go across Jordan or Egypt through Saudi Arabia airspace to attack uh, Al Hudaydah port in Yemen. Yes, yes. and they were uh, resupplied in air by uh, uh, a fueling plane owned by the Italian uh, Italian Air Force, which they have in Djibouti in Djibouti, the state of Djibouti, in the Horn of Africa, they have a base. So basically, the well, of course, the, the yesterday the the Saudis came. Oh no, no, no! We have nothing to do with it. We have nothing to do with it. It's not our. They didn't cross our, uh, you know, uh, territories. Nevertheless, it it's uh, Americans who are running the show. The Americans have all those uh, about. Two or three uh, uh, sea port bases along the Red Sea in Saudi Arabia, and they have all these uh, Aramada on the Red Sea. So it's a it's a, a joint uh, American Zionist Italian British attack yesterday on the port of Al Hudaida in Yemen, which resulted so far of the death of uh, six people and injury of about 80 people most of them by burning by you know uh, uh, burn injuries mm. yep. uh, i have a, 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 a f- image of the drone this is uh, a, a new drone that has been uh, put into use that can evade the iron dome <laughs> so you know like the whole you know sense of security of the zionists you know is blown away and uh i'd like it to show show it to you um and uh i'm not sure if it's here okay or another this is palestine a a live palestine emission coming on perhaps part of the day it's not operating right now but uh the sad photo um oh uh, yes here's david lammy in uh 
in a speech that I'll add on to the video at the end, you know, when we've uh, finished. Good. And here is the, uh, here it is, electric Shahid 101. <laughs> you know, like, this is uh, technology. This is, you know, sophistication. Uh, you know, as opposed to the Iron Dome, you know, like, it's like completely different mentality. It's nearly silent. And it came in from the sea as well, where they had no detection equipment, you know, like, because it's the sea. <laughs> Very, you know, like, intelligent. And it succeeded. I'll play that later on as well. Yeah. And where did that uh, drone come from? From Iran. Now, what's That's next what going said. to happen? That's what it said. You know, it's actually the, uh, the Houthis or the Yemenis said that it was a homemade drone is not uh, uh, Iranian. The Zionists claim that be Iranian. Okay, let's mm -hmm. just be careful how we use our sources. We should yeah. not support the Zionist narrative about this because they yeah. want to blame everything on Iran and tell that the Arabs are stupid. They cannot build their own drones. Therefore, they have to use the Iranian technology. That's not true. It's uh -huh. a it's a it's a created and a created planned and executed by a Arab Yemenis, and uh, it's not a uh, Shahid uh, one hundred and one. That's you what know, is on. I I think you're you're very right. You know because I saw a video of the uh, drone that went into Tel Aviv, and it was making the whirly noise. It wasn't a, it wasn't you know a, a silent drone like this is. Yes, that's yeah, a completely you know, different we, we, thing. We're not, yeah. we're not, we're not. It's just that uh, they, they went in from the sea and they avoided the detection, you know, equipment. Yeah. That's it's, the thing that was. Yeah, uh, we're you know, not. Strategic. I take, I take the narrative of the Yemenis anytime over the Zionist narrative, which is always a lies, lies, yes. lies, lies, fabrication. So when they say it's Iranian, no, it's not Iranian. When the Yemeni says it's Yemeni, it is Yemeni. This uh -huh. is how it goes. It should, it should, it should be. You know. Uh huh. Well, I would hope, though, that uh, that drone, the electric drone, you know, is available to the uh, re the Revolutionary Guard in uh, Iraq. Oh, yeah. And Definitely. In Syria. Yes. So yeah, I'm sure that's... there's lots, lots of share of technology between the axis of the resistance axis. I'm sure there's lots of uh, shared technology between the Iranians, the Yemenis, the Palestinians and the uh, Lebanese and the Iraqis. So mm -hmm. you don't need to import the whole thing from Iran to, to use it. You could yeah. share the, that technology, you could build it your own. And this is the difference between, you know, uh, the, the resistance axis who they are basically independent, an alliance of independent forces versus those uh, in the American uh, satellite uh, states like uh, Saudi Arabia, Jordan, Egypt, who are not allowed to build their own. They are only allowed to buy from the United States, uh, you know, uh, hardware, which always usually is coded by the Americans. They can kill it anytime. Like, for yes. example, oh, yeah. like the F-16 uh, that uh, the Jordanians and uh, e Egyptians and, uh, and uh, Saudis who operate they have to get acquired every day a code or like a passcode from uh -huh. the American Center Command in order to fly those ones. Okay. Uh -huh. And anytime the Americans feel that these planes could pose a threat to Israel, it will be shut down. It will be uh, by electronically, it will be shut down uh -huh. by, uh, yeah, exactly. So that's what it is. So these uh -huh. are. Yes, that's a, a very short leash, uh, I would say. Exactly, you are only allowed to use those planes or Abrams or our um, uh, oh, surface-to-air missiles made by United States by acquiring oh, a permission. It's like a permission. It's like a network. So oh. uh, it's yes. I actually I knew that before for a long time, but I was speaking to to. Uh, a retired uh, military engineer in uh, the Jordanian uh, forces, uh, actually air forces, 
And he told he actually he concurred the fact. <laughs> he told me yes, it is it is a fact that uh, we only allowed to fly or use those big and most advanced uh, weaponry by getting a permission from the United States Central Command in Europe every day. Wow. Yes. <laughs> Nobody knows that. Steve. <laughs> yeah. Steve, help yeah. us. You know, like we need a revolution in the United States of America. <laughs> you know, like, you know, what's going to happen now with Trump? Trump is, you know, a loose cannon. You know, he could do anything. He's going to get it, isn't he? Well, somebody I know said yesterday, if if, if you try to predict the election results in in July and elections in August in November, you're in the wrong business. So I'm not sure what's going to happen. You yeah. just don't know. No one knew what was going to happen two weeks ago, did we? No. Yeah. Okay then. So and, you know we'll have to just see what happens before the, before the election goes. But the convert people, I think, what people forget, um, gentlemen, is that the Congress is really the key to me. The Congress, not the president. The president himself can set policy. And he or she has often to do certain things. He's a leader, true. But the Congress is really who has to agree. The House and Senate, they have to agree to any appropriation of money. Because it's a constitutional republic. It's not a presidential if, if it was a if it was a presidential republic, it'd be different. Hmm. But it's not. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's, it's more a constitutional so, republic. More more right. like Canada. The, yeah. Right, right. That's the difference. So mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, the looks. I mean, me as an outsider, even though I'm here, it seems to me that Trump has the upper hand right now. I think so. We just today we're supposed to find out the day or tomorrow Biden's going to drop out the race. Well, you'll see. I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll just have to see because because two weeks ago we we couldn't say what, what the situation that you know that was going to occur, but things occurred and now things are different. Yeah. As far as that, that, again, that's why I, I gave props to the British, the UK populations for coming out for the demonstrations. We have not had demonstrations. We, we've had demonstrations in the United States. We have. But not of the same impact. Mm -hmm. No, they're not, they're not the same impact. Those the UK, the UK demonstrations have had impact with the United States is a, is a major support of Israel. The US industries make money off of Israel's bombing and uh, atrocities against the Palestinians. So it, it's a much harder situation to overturn because there's vested interests of the U.S. economy, the U.S. economy in the in the in the, in the um, attacks on the Palestinians, which is why if if you're opposed to Israel, you call an anti-Semite. They have to go to those those um, propaganda words to elicit fear or hatred to make people uh question the the, the anti the, the pro palestinian movement mm -hmm. that's why it's so hard because they go you're you're anti-semite it's mm -hmm. it's it's like being called you're a racist oh well it's it's, it's, it's a throw up it's a throw up conversation yeah it's serious it's based on money the money the, the military industrial complex is making billions of dollars off this war they want to continue as long as possible. They yeah. care less about me. Yeah, you know. But I think it's more well, ideological. I think it's an ideology that is driving this war drive. Yeah. You know, because so. yeah. yes. even yes, Trump, you know, like in, in his uh, speech, he starts off by talking about one nation, one faith. He said that. He said yeah, it was well, one yeah. faith. What does he mean by that? He means it's Christian, evangelical, Christian. you know, Protestant, you know, like bullshit. Right. That's what he means. Right. This is, you know, like... Right. Uh, that's part of the whole theocratic state, you know, nation state, you know, thesis of Hegel and Hitler, both all right, right together. Right. Yeah. right. And I, I appreciate you raising that because they try to throw religion right in, right in uh, the mix. Yeah. And that, and, the, and that, that, and that complicates it a lot. Yeah. 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 But he just reveals, you know, what's the reality, the actuality, you know, like Biden, you know, operates on the same principle, you know, Biden calls himself a Zionist because he's a Christian. You know, that's what Christianity is all about, you know. Well, you know, this that, whole that's, that's, scheme that's has been you... created and set forth, you know, and sent off, uh, you know, on a, on a online direct, you know, directed by the West. is you know, engaging, you know, all the desperate, you know, refugees to become mercenaries and to, you know, hand over their children to indoctrination. 
that's what Zionism is all about. Uh, it's, yeah, it's, it, it, it definitely, it def and, it's, and it's also about intimidation and and um, harassment and physical attacks on demonstrators whenever possible. Yeah, that's what fascists yeah. do. Yeah, right. That's what they do. Fascist activity. Yeah, yeah. Right, right. I wouldn't. Um, I wouldn't just. Uh, I would like to go back to the point you raised it about Biden being Christian or uh, Zionist. Trump, uh, you know, Christian Zionist and Trump. Yes, this is how it started. It's about using the Christianity uh, beliefs, uh, uh, which is being uh, mixed with the uh, economical gains of capitalism, and so it, it become one one ideology. Christian, uh, evangelical, or um, ideology uh, that supports the you know the gains for capitalists and and uh, the advancement of imperialism. So it's it's more of a mixture of economical and uh, theft, of course, economical theft and Christian Christian imperialism, which uh, you know advanced uh, the the. Robbery. The crusades, yeah, the crusades, the, you know. Yeah, it is the robbery of of the of the, the land from the indigenous people and in the Americas and oceanic. Uh, so it, it, it's a it's a it's a I wouldn't say just only Christianity is a driving force. There's more into it. There's also economical gains, and they use religion. Yeah, as the back that's what, of, yeah. I yeah, mean, it's, no, that's, that's what the whole Christianity is all about, you know. Like prosperity yeah. is the gift of God, you know. Like yeah, so we have to because not too many people like there's other people who's out there who are Christians and they believe in Christianity, but they are in total naivete to Biden and Trump. So we have to be care very careful. Like when we say Zionism is Judaism, that's stupidity. Okay. Zionism yeah. is a is an illness uh, an illness in the Jewish body, but not Jew, Jews are not to blame. So we yeah. have to be very careful when we talk about Christianity. Like we mm -hmm. should not attack Christianity as per se. We have to talk about this per certainty, certain section or uh, uh, of uh, of Christianity who are part of the imperialist and capitalist system. So, yes. so very important because the Arab Christians they are not part of it. They are actually the victims of of capitalism, imperialism, and Zionism. That's oh, yes. I just want yes. to make that point. Uh, well, it's on two levels, Thank you know, you. one there's different kinds of Christians. You know, Oriental Christians yes. are real Christians, and Western Christians are Roman Empire Christians. You know, it's a different kind of church. It's the church yeah, that counts. We and have also, to be, we have to be we have to politicize uh, and put. Our uh, our uh, charge to any ideology with a political economical context by throwing just because Biden do this because he's Christian, it could be received as we are or you are uh, accusing Christianity of being anti-humanity, but that's not the case in many in many areas in the world, especially in the east like russia in ukraine in well, the arab east there's christians yes and yes are... yes yeah not only the church you know like is a uh, defines you know what its content is but also you know there's a difference you know between christianity and christians christians are just people who have been you know taught to think in a certain way that's all they yes. haven't heard anything else you yes. know before that's all yeah. you know but christianity uh -huh. as an ideology is another matter you know there's even a term called christendom which is the dominion of Christianity, you know, which is, you know, a theory, you know, in Christianity, well, you know, Western Christianity of world domination. It's, uh, you know, planned out that way. These things are Definitely. very... Definitely. I'm, I'm not saying, I am not saying, but, I'm not saying that the Western Christianity in general as institutions, they were part of the capitalist, imperialist colonization of the new, so-called new world. Yes, that's for sure. The 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 Anglican Church and the uh, the Roman Catholic Church, as systems as institutions, they were instrumental yes. in colonization, and actually the creation of uh, the imperialist 
system all around the world. Okay? Yes. But now there's lots of different types of Christianity. There's a liberation theology within the Catholic Church, which is really actually was in within the uh, in Central America, played a, a, a good yes. part on in, in progressive uh, forces against the uh, theocracy and uh, against uh, uh, the stu the stooge systems that uh, works for the United States, so let's say in Honduras, Salvador, Nicaragua, etc. You name it. Yes, true. Uh, um, true. But um, I, I want to uh, point out that the uh, the features of Christianity that are integral, you know, to imperialism and slavery um, have a certain coincidence with strands of Judaism that were merged by Protestantism to form this ideology called Judeo-Christianity. Yes. In Judaism, there are strands that are uh, colonialist like that. For instance, it was the prophet Samuel that objected to the populist, you know, demand for a nation like other nations when people uh, wanted to have a king and they wanted to have a king proclaimed. And Samuel said, no, we're not a nation like other nations and a king will only bring you war and taxes. You know, so why do you want to have a king? So, you know, it's all written down in the Torah. And so the people still ask for a king. So he finally relented. And he was his position was not of a king. And his position was that of a judge, in effect, you know, like Moses. And he said, OK, you know, you want a king? You know, the 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 the, the, the child, you know, the son of the, over there of that worker, you know, over there, you know, like I proclaim him to be your king. <laughs> you know, like, he sort of made a mockery of it, you know. So but. You know, and the golden calf, you know, incident as well in the history with Moses when they, were, you know, went to search for some sort of, you know, authority over them that was not the abstract authority of the of the of the, of the law of, uh, of the deity and you know, the law of Moses, basically. So, you know, there's two conflicting traditions in Judaism. I've written about this, and I'd like to elaborate about it further. There's, you know, fascinating sort of features, you know, differences between various prophets, like Ezekiel called for a state. Samuel was against the state, you know, like, you know, and it's never been resolved. You know, here we have it as an expression found, you know, that in Zionism, you know, that was, you know, sought after, you know, by the Protestants who, who wanted, you know, as a, some reason, you know, to, to, um, you know, occupy the, the Holy Land as another crusade, but with a force that was, you know, more, uh, um, had more um, supporters than they had, you know, because, you know, after 10 Crusades, you know, losing 10 Crusades, you know, didn't make any sense, you know, for the for the Western Christians to start another one, you know, like they knew it was, going, it was not going to work again. But to send the Jewish refugees there, to rid themselves of the Jewish refugees that they didn't allow into their own countries in the first place, to send the refugees there, that was feasible, that they supported that they didn't care about the Palestinians. It was more important for them to get rid of the Jewish people. That's what I think. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, that's the initial inspiration and the wave of support for the Zionists before they didn't have, you know, any critical mass to be able to take over the whole country like that. Yeah, that was collaboration between the yeah. Western imperialist and the Zionist movement yeah. who really push, pushed the Western government not to allow uh, the Jewish refugees into their lands, uh, right. rather send them back to Palestine, like in the case of Canada, or even the United States. Yeah, and mo most of those people end up dying in in the in the German uh, Nazis uh, concentration camps. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's uh, pr yeah. pretty. Even pretty after the Holocaust, you know, they wouldn't let Jewish refugees in, except. In, in my father's case, you know, because he had a sister here who was a citizen before the war who sponsored it, you know, his yeah. family. Yeah, yeah. That's Everybody the only way, you know, back very limited, you know, just a few thousand, you know. That was yes. all they were willing to concede. And uh, then the second wave of the Zionist colonization came from the Jewish Arabs who yes. were tricked and... Uh, uh, they were tricked basically into leaving their Arabic countries of the Maghreb. Actually, they've been they've been pushed uh, and tricked and uh, terrorized into. Mm. They were coerced into leaving yes. their own homes, 
and their businesses and uh, their real estate, their properties, everything. They're, they're actually they've been uprooted hmm. from their own homes, from their own countries uh, to move to the Zionist state. Uh, whether it's a fresh French occupation authorities at that time, most of the Arab countries were under either British or oh, French yes. rule, and the British and and French uh, uh, secret services collaborated with the Zionist agents in oh, order yes. to make life miserable for these Jews, and of course with a collaboration with local authorities, of course, who are puppets, I mean, you know, either British or uh, British or uh, French puppets. So basically, yeah. between 1949 to 1954 or 55, there was a massive uh, deportation against their will, against their own will, in general, mostly, to move from basically the, the majority of Arab Jews who were in, in Algeria, no, in uh, Morocco, Iraq, sure. and in Yemen. That's the word. The, that's the vast majority. I would say they make about eighty percent of the uh, the Mizrahi Jews or the Arab Jews. Uh -huh. And uh, actually, some of the of those Jews who've been forced out uh, by the collaboration of the three, uh, you know, thugs, the occupation, the Zionist agency, and the local. Uh, puppet regimes, some of them went to Europe, to the United States, uh, instead of going to so-called, you know, Israel. Only the poor ones left who are mm. left to, to Palestine because they have no choice but to go, where they're forced to. Who has mm. money went to France and Germany, Britain and the United States. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This Whereas, reminds me of a story that my father told me in the ref Jewish refugee camp of Bretzlau after the Holocaust where my parents met. And he was saying that the Zionist agents were allowed into the camp to recruit Jewish refugees to go to Palestine. Okay? Mm -hmm. So there were the uh, other Jewish people who were anti-Zionist, the Jewish Bundes, and they would go and they would tell people, no, you know, like, don't listen to them. You know, they're lying to you. You know, they're, they're offering you a house, you know, that belongs, you know, to a Palestinian, basically. And... Uh -huh. uh, so what the Zionists did is they went and beat up the Jewish Bundes, who were also refugees. They beat up ref Jewish refugees in order to stop them from talking against Zionism. You know, this is the way in which the Jewish refugees were formed into an immigration uh, into uh, Palestine. Yes, it corresponds. The same strategy they were using. Wherever they can use, they'll do it, you know, to manipulate Jewish people. There's, there's a... Uh... An Iraqi Jewish historian who was uh, born in, in actually in Iraq, but he was a little kid when they moved to Palestine. I can't remember his name. He wrote about the plight of Arab Jews. Uh, I can't remember his name. He's well known. He he uh, he taught in Oxford. Um, I, I if I remember his name, I will pass to you. He wrote a, a big book, a huge book about what the Zionists did to push the Arab Jews to uh, migrate to Palestine because the Zionist idea was to bring all the Ashkenazi Jews. This is their initial idea, to bring an Ashkenazi Jews, I mean, sorry, the Sephardi Jews, the Sephardi, the Ashkenazi, the Sephardi, we don't need them. They're garbage. We don't know that we need those people. But by 1948, they found out that who managed to migrate or immigrate to Palestine were a, a small section of the Ashkenazi Jews, and they need people to to populate this uh, a new haven they created uh, during the Nakba. So no no Ashkenazi Jew wants to go to uh, Palestine after the 1948. Very little bit. So they said, okay, let's get those, um, you know, um, uncivilized Jews to to Palestine. Mm -hmm. So they brought them in. Mm -hmm. And we if we all know what happened to their babies and children being abducted upon arrival oh, by yeah. the white Jews 
to civilize them, to make them yeah. civilized. Mm -hmm. And uh, we know the, the squalid conditions of the, the uh, Sephardi Jews, they had to live through between 1949 to 1965, basically. Yeah. They were put into uh, arid areas, hot areas, no mm -hmm. water, no running water, no uh, electricity. Frontier, frontier towns to for security of the border. Yeah, exactly. that's what they were used for. Yeah. But yeah. sadly, the Zionists managed to succeed and to convert all these people, or uh -huh. at least their children and grandchildren, into become ardent Zionists, Arab haters, yeah. actually worse than the Ashkenazi themselves. It's it's such a sad. It's very sad. Yeah, self haters. That's what they're doing. Exactly. They are. They are. They are. Actually, yeah. there, many of them are even darker than me. Yeah. You know, they're really dark, especially yeah. the yeah. ones come from uh, from Yemen. You yeah. will not dis differentiate them from actually uh, from the darkest Palestinians. And yeah. the, those people are the worst of the worst. Yeah. So, you know, how many, this was a big move that they carried out because it formed 70% of the population. The, the Mizrahim were 70% with an elite you know, and the national bourgeoisie that was completely Ashkenazim, you know. Yeah, but so yes, they offset it, uh, uh, it, it by bringing, bringing uh, a million uh, and a half from Ukraine and Russia. That's that's the third step. That's the third wave of the Zionist, uh, you yes. know, colonization. That's what I was going to uh, mention next. And that's what reduced the percentage of the Mizrahim to 50%. Yeah. And the Russian, you know, uh, Jewish population... They even have their, you know, like old newspapers in Russian, you know, they're not living, you know, like in Palestine, they're, they're in still living in Russia, you know, like, it's, it's incredible, you know. And, and actually, uh, there's TV stations inside the Zionist state that speaks only in Russian. Yeah. TV <laughs> and radio stations. Yeah. You know? yeah. And they have yeah. their own party, actually, it's Lieberman, that Lieberman guy. Oh, yes. He, he, he has, it's called the uh, Israel Our House Party. Oh yeah, Jewish Home Party. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Which okay. is actually mainly mainly made for the uh, East European Jews from Ukraine and Russia. Wow, <laughs> but, but their coalition has cracked up now. You know the uh, the Orthodox Jewish parties, Has Shas and uh, Torah. Uh, Degel uh, Hatora. Yeah, something. Degel Hatora, Agodat Israel. There's two parties. Agodat, yes. Yeah. So they've quit. They've quit now, you know, and they're refusing to be conscripted, right? Isn't that what's happened? You know, like they've totally... Said, well, you know, they haven't quit. Officially, they, they're threatening. Today, they're supposed, the Zionist state's supposed to send uh, a conscription uh, notice to about 3,000 uh, Haridim, uh, you know, conscripts. Mm -hmm. So the Agodat Israel, Degel HaTorah, and Shas uh, uh, issued an edict to all these young people to ignore the conscript uh, notes, or specifically meaning that business as usual. Mm. So uh, uh, nothing, I don't think anything will happen, okay? Mm. Because uh, who has the authority to uh, bring those in? Uh, it's the military police and uh, the military police under the control uh, under the control of the prime minister who would not allow them to do that because mm. he needs those people i mean those religious people religious parties in this coalition so it's it's yet to be seen what will happen in the next few days or a few weeks uh, whether there will be cracks over this conscription or not I think that what they're going to do is use uh, the subsidies that they provide to the yeshivas as a tool to force uh, any given yeshiva to give up a certain percentage of its uh, so-called registered students. And the yeshiva will perhaps collaborate with them in order to keep its subsidies and keep their salaries, right? And they'll, uh, you know, send some yeshiva students, you know, who don't come to the yeshiva enough. They say they don't study enough. Okay, so you can go off to the military. You know, I they use that as a I, discipline mechanism. I don't think they'll happen under Netanyahu's government. This is not going to happen. Uh, no, because <laughs> he, he's so dependent upon the the two. Uh, oh, of course, if he if yeah. he if he lose uh, these members of his coalition, he will fall. 
Yeah. Then he'll go exactly. to jail. Now, yeah, that's that's, not happen. yeah. 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 That's true. Yeah. Yep. You know, we're sort of lucky, you know, that you're able to speak out here because we're breaking through so many gates of censorship. And your testimony is, you know, like, and your knowledge of Palestine, you know, is yes. so direct. It's wonderful to hear from you on all these. Uh, Thank you. you know, well, it certainly, it certainly is. It certainly for, is. Um, essential it information, is. you know, that uh, is not right. available anywhere else. You know. No, it is not. No, it is Except not. Here and now. Here we are. Here and now. Yeah. yeah. Very well. Okay, so oh. I'm worried, though, uh, uh, about the, the United States. I think that in spite of whatever happens in the election, which is largely irrelevant, I think that uh, the right, the right-wing fascists are going to be emboldened. And that's yes. what's more important than who wins the election, actually, you know, because if they, if Trump wins the election, they'll be emboldened. They think they can get away with anything and they're going to be pardoned. And they will be pardoned. The ones, you know, that were convicted for the, the 6th of uh, whatever, January. January. You know, they, they, yeah, they, they've been promised that they're going to be pardoned, you know. So they figured they can do anything they want after that, you know, like it's open season. So then we have to be ready for a defense. We have to have a united front defense in all all levels. And Agreed. if they if they don't win the election, then they're going to be so angry that they're going to attack anyway. They're going to say, you know, this is a false election. And, you know, we're taking over now. You know, they're going to have the power to do so until we have the means to defend ourselves. And, uh, you know, this spills over into Canada as well. You know, there's 30,000 uh, Trumpists, you know, libertarians and such, you know, here in Canada, who already occupied the capital of Ottawa at one time with 200 truck owners who made themselves out to be the poor workers who couldn't cross the border because they didn't want to wear a mask or something, you know, as they used that as an excuse and intimidated yes. the prime minister, you know, for how long? Two weeks, you know, the center of the city was shut down. It was incredible. Yeah, about about more than that, I think. maybe three weeks. I can't remember. But yeah, it was in weeks. Yeah. I don't know how long I've, I, th I forget that. Yeah, there is. This, this populism is very dangerous, you know. Because well, you know what? It, in a way, there's a silver lining for this populism or, uh, you know, those extreme right wing fascists. It will bring eventually with, with Escher the uh, beginning of the demise of uh, Western imperialistic, imperialistic hegemony in the world. Yes. Because uh, the the uh, the fighting within these uh, states and, and countries will eventually weaken the the grip of these countries or states to the wor mm -hmm. international world. Mm -hmm. Yes, it could be really ugly on the streets and within the societies within these prospective countries, but the the benefits to the world for about 8 billion people is way much better than worrying about what happened to 350 million Americans. True, I doubt true, true. there will be any true. war within, uh, internal war within the United States, but I think the United States will eventually be weakened more and more. And we are seeing that happening uh, all around the world. They cannot sustain their war in, uh, in the Ukraine. They're losing the war in Ukraine. They are cannot uh, be uh, showing their de deterrence to the Yemenis or the Hezbollah. Uh, for the first time, the American uh, fire, firepower and, and deterrence in the Red Sea uh, yielded zero, nothing. So uh, the American hegemony is loosening slowly bit by bit since the year i would say since they occupied iraq in 2003 mm -hmm. so it's declining but we're seeing it how it's declining mm -hmm. slowly yep. yeah too slowly mm -hmm. and of course it drags with it all its imperialist uh, little poodles like canada australia germany france italy U united kingdom they all mm -hmm following the follow step that's why they're going crazy you mm -hmm. know like in, in in ukraine they're losing the war big time mm -hmm. yeah in, yeah in 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 uh in uh in the east 
there's alliance between China, Russia, North Korea, and in Vietnam. Even Vietnam now, it used to be with the Americans now mm. turning, pivoting back to to the Russians. So it doesn't look good for the Western imperialism and imperialists in at home and abroad. Uh -huh. And there's a developing revolt within the Ukraine against the Zelensky regime. And there's a prospect of a civil war even within uh, occupied 48 territories because there's a split happening. The opposition is getting stronger. Yes, okay. Oh. But they will not be tolerated by the right wing. The right oh. wing have already announced that they will kill the Democrats and leftists. I heard this on the radio. And my yes. cousin in the taxi t translated it for me, like on talk radio. They talk openly about doing this. They're ready to attack. In the West Bank, they are attacking already. Hmm? And they were handed out, you know, the automatic rifles by Ben Giver in his National Guard. National Guard yes. is the is the squatters there, you know, and they've been given... They're the all... brown shirt of Zionism. That's it. Yeah. The brown shirts of Zionism. That's yeah. what they're doing. Yeah. yeah. So, so it doesn't uh, look good for them. And it's I've learned, you know, from from what my parents, you know, taught me, you know, when you see developments like that, you don't sit there and watch it, you know, <laughs> and you don't run away. You have to stay and fight. You know, this is, you know, the Jewish Bundes perspective, Antifa, you know, that mentality. We don't let uh, fascism pass, not here, Absolutely. not anywhere. That's Absolutely. right. That's Absolutely. Right. It's a worldwide struggle. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. All interconnected. Yeah. Very good. Okay. That's a very good point upon which we can conclude